the traditional guitar making fashion, which is um, a wood joint, they call it a dovetail joint. It's a mortise and tenon that's shaped with an angle and it, it's, it's, it's kind of self-locking. You know, you put it in, you put glue in it, um, and you, um, you put that whole thing together that way. You, you do your best to get that angle exactly right. Mm -hmm. You do as a, as a master guitar builders, but what happens when we have to do it a couple hundred times today? Well, you're gonna, uh, 190 of those times, it's not gonna be the right angle. And actually, as a master guitar builder, I would, I would, you know, I get one chance to get it right, but you don't really know until you unclamp the clamps and you're like, oh! <laughs> and then, <laughs> then there's that, that sneaky problem of 20 years from now, by the time this guitar is moved a little bit, because it's made of wood, what was just the absolute perfect neck angle isn't anymore. It isn't anymore. Or the top dries out and sinks mm -hmm. out from under it, or things move. So we we build we designed this NT neck. This neck is really the culmination of. Let me go back. First, we made guitars with chisels and saws. Then we made them with router jigs. And then one day, you know, the personal computer hit our lives, and just like. You can do digital photography and edit it on a screen. You can do digital guitar design and build it in a machine. And when we first got this computerized machinery 15 to 18 years ago, it, we used it to mimic what we did by hand. And 10 or some years into that, uh, I thought, gosh, we need to exploit it to really make new designs that are impossible to make by hand. Eventually, we came up with this neck, and what's cool about it is, it is it fits into the guitar. When you see a Taylor guitar, it's hard to imagine that that neck is actually inlaid right here and right there because it looks like any other traditional guitar. But underneath it is this, um, these little, we call them shims. I think we've glued these in place so that they don't fall out when we demonstrate it's it. It's a stunt guitar. It's a yeah. stunt guitar. <laughs> this is. This is a shim and this is a shim, and shims in the guitar world kind of, you don't want to say that word because it no, sounds like you missed. It's got a bad connotation. Yeah, right. <laughs> but shims in, in the machinist world, shims in the automotive world, are a precision instrument to bring something right into the spot that it's supposed to be. So these are made, they're precision made. You can see, well, probably can't on the camera, but this one has lasered into it a zero. That's its value. That means there's no angle on it. This one has measured into it a negative six. That means that it's six thousandths of an inch or two pieces of yellow pad paper thinner on this end than that end. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's more of a laser milled spacer than a shim. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really, really precisely gauged adjustment. angle adjustment mm -hmm. mechanism. Mm -hmm. right. It's made out of wood. Everything fits on there perfect. It transfers sounds really, really, really well. Um, the the neck fits in there just like your like your cylinder head bolts up to your block on your car. It just fits, and air can't leak out, right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, the way this works is we have various adjustments on these. And if I were to put that in degrees, you think, oh, that neck is like, a, it's like a half a degree off. Well, a half a degree would be like me driving to Seattle and ending up in North Dakota, because I just am off by a half a degree. You know right. what I mean? It's, <laughs> in reality, these adjustments are 0.039 degrees each. Less than four hundredths of a degree with each spacer. That would be really like taking that piece of notebook paper and shaving it to half its thickness and using that shim. If anybody's ever worked on like a Fender Strat, a bolt-on neck guitar, you know, almost everyone's unscrewed those screws, put a business card under one end and screwed them back on to get the right <laughs> neck angle. That's what we're doing here, but with infinitesimal adjustments. But sometimes that's the adjustment you need. You need to go from a zero to a plus two. It rotates the neck. Normally when you take a neck off of a guitar, you do it by removing wood with a chisel, you, you steam it off, you glue it back on. Not only do you sort of overshoot where you're trying to get, right, but you also move the position of the neck from removing the wood and then all of a sudden the saddle is in the wrong place and you've got to re-intonate the guitar. This is designed to actually rotate around the top of the 14th fret. So it doesn't matter what angle's on, it's a rotational adjustment. So 
the saddle's in the right place all the time, every time, never gets adjusted. So it allows us to, most importantly, get the guitar neck adjusted right when it leaves the factory. And we're really good at it. And we can take this apart and put it back together with the right, with the, let's say we put it together and we missed. And it's a traditionally glued on, you know, joint like we've done, made guitars before. Well, you're kind of like, it's got to miss a lot before you're going <laughs> right. to do anything about it. This one's Any, mostly right. Anybody who ever made a guitar is going to laugh when I say that. You, it has to really be seriously off before you're going to... Burn a few days taking that thing apart so you can put it back together. And then when it's done, it's kind of re a, a repaired guitar that you're selling as a brand new guitar. With this, it's four minutes, five minutes. There's no excuse for it to not be right. We take it apart, we make the adjustment. It's like ba balancing the wheels on a car or something. You just take them off and you balance it, you put it back on.